What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Sit Down Talk. My name is Kier. And I'm Noemi. And we welcome you. Clap it up for you for being in this joint. Look at you. Sitting down in your seat looking all studious and such. If you're new here, congratulations. You popped up on an amazing episode. It's going to be a fantastic voyage. But if you are a group of people that I like to refer to as the repeat offenders, come on, bring that in. Group hug. Bring that in. <laughs> bring that in. Mm. Hugs are nice. <laughs> What? We <laughs> we are getting back into the groove of doing the sit down talk. It's here to stay. A lot has happened. A lot has transpired over the last couple of months. Since the last time you've seen us, we talked a lot about our roles in the relationship and how they've changed and how like <laughs> roles. Roles. Ugh. What are those? I know. Like they don't exist. The way that we have changed in our relationship and the way that our priorities are a little bit different mm. based on those new roles. So in the last episode, we were kind of going through that initial like shock, like, oh, shit, this feels really different. How do we adjust? And now we're kind of in the groove of the adjustment where it's a lot of grace, but it's also a lot of understanding. And I think that we're picking up a new groove. I thought you were about to say it's a lot of gray areas. I was about to be like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's big facts. But we're okay with the gray. I think one of the things that we talked about is like, Certain points in our relationship aren't an end all be all. We're constantly growing. And I think we're finally, like I said, okay with the gray and okay with the growth. We don't have the answers, but we're cool with the journey. Does that make sense? Yeah. For me, it's, I don't have all the answers, but I'm okay with the way things are right now. And I'm okay with not always having had the answers. When it comes to relationships, people use words like intentional and what's the other one that people love with relationships? It falls within that intentional, purposeful manifestation bag of words. As if you can control it. Yeah, like it doesn't always work that way. In intentionality, sometimes if the other person isn't game for whatever your game plan is, your intentionality may feel like manipulation of them. Right. You know, overhanded coercion to them. It doesn't feel like that on the opposite side. So I think intentionality in a relationship is really, I'm not going to say over overrated but I think it's overemphasized. People focus on the wrong things. I think there's nothing wrong with setting intentions but you have to understand that in those setting intentions it's one-sided. You can intend mm. to do something but the way that your partner receives that has to also be considered. Intentionality is only half of the work. That reminds me of when people say something like they're trying to explain their feelings to people mm -hmm. and they always say it in an off-putting way and when they're trying to explain themselves they say well i could have said it better hard stop focus on that part yeah hard <laughs> stop no matter how emotionally charged your words are because the things that you feel are real you still have a responsibility if you want to get back from that person was going to make you feel good and heard and responded to a whole you have a responsibility to deliver that message in a way that the person can receive it mm. and usually that's going to be without blame mm. without accusations mm. which is hard that's to do that's really i was about Man, to say that's hard listen. that's hard especially <laughs> when you're not feeling heard yeah that's actually what prompted at least what i intend to focus this conversation on is like the after not feeling heard the after not feeling like we're on the same page the after having that conversation what do you do next mm. and i feel like that's kind of where we are Okay, that's a good one. So let's start with this. Give examples of not feeling heard because we say that all the time when we're talking about interpersonal relationships, not just romantic relationships, mm -hmm. even friendships. You mm -hmm. feel like you're not being heard. Mm -hmm. Even relationships with your parents, mm -hmm. you feel like you're not being heard. So what does that look like for you specifically? Okay, you want to use specific examples in our relationship that we've worked through? Okay, oh, yeah, 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 that okay, we worked like, through, yeah. So what's the last long situation it, you know, we... Long as it ain't a pending transaction. No, no. I asked you this before, but like, what was the takeaway in Hawaii? I know we both felt like we weren't being heard. Do they know what Hawaii was? You know what? Let's give context. That's all right. right. Story time. Yeah, what right, dramatic right. music sound like? I don't know. Play the dramatic music and zoom in on us. <laughs> story time. All right. So how can we say the story without anyone being upset over again? All right. So basically. Oh, in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So we, we, okay. I'm committed to being forward thinking about this. Like we got over it. I'll we, keep it objective. Okay, okay. So basically what happened in Hawaii is Noemi was really upset with me because uh, she felt like there was, correct me if I'm wrong, more I could have done to just be a little bit more communicative or explain intention a little bit better yeah. of what was going on. And how you were feeling. I and, took and, a lot of and, things and personally how, yeah. that weren't. 
and how I was Personal. feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think on the inverse, I felt like she didn't communicate with me well enough to be that upset with me. I felt blamed a little bit and I felt like it could have been fixed had we had a conversation. Now, it took weeks, yeah. like about two or three weeks and maybe we could talk about this too. Like we talk about love languages all the time. What happens with your, I'm not with you right yeah. now language. Like what's, yeah. that's just as important oh as gosh. your love language. Yeah. I'm not with you right Let's now. Let's call that. It's, there's love languages and there's like frustration. Language. Like high conflict. Yeah. How do you deal with conflict? Do you run away? And some people run away and some people walk away. Those are two totally different mm. things. What's the difference to you? I feel like running away is avoidance and I feel like walking away is like I just need, I some need time. space and time. Because some people are very conflict avoidant mm -hmm. and that's yeah your conflict languages. How do you deal with conflict? And man that was a lesson for us. Yeah it was because when she got upset she she did what she needed to do to get space. Mm -hmm. And while I respect and understand that, what she needed to do to get space just so happens to break one of my biggest boundaries. Yeah. Now we're both at this point of contention where she's hurt for the original reason. And now I'm upset because the That's reason that she's hurt, I feel like I'm being blamed and I don't like the reaction. Mm -hmm. So now it's the chicken or the egg. What's going to get solved first? Yeah. Who's going to extend the olive branch first so that we can undo this knot? Mm -hmm. And, and the olive branch was extended a couple of times. I'm just going to put this point in there is I really commend us because there were points in time throughout this two week period that he might have been ready to talk and I wasn't mm. or I was ready to talk and he wasn't. And 2019, 2018 carrying away me, it yeah. just would have been bad. It would have been bad. Somebody would have had to really fold and really make themselves uncomfortable and unsafe to have that conversation. Mm. And I feel like at this juncture, in our relationship I mean we were still upset and we were still mad at things but we really wanted to fix it and we wanted it to be the right time and place to have those conversations and I'm glad that we did even though it frustrated me at times where I really wanted to talk to you and it wasn't the right time and I'm sure it frustrated you as well yeah because when you got something that's heavy on your heart it's against somebody that you love you want to put it on the table you want to get it resolved but that may not always be the best yeah. time just bringing it back to the I don't what you language what's your joint what did you used to call it conflict language yeah yeah like your conflict style or whatever i think we have two different types like hers is she'll be more so like i know we were beefing the other day but i really need you right yeah. now let's talk compartmentalize yeah i could i could be mad at you but if i need you for something i can put that on the back burner <laughs> you got uh you like the home edit you got little yeah. cubbies and plastic yes. containers for all of your feelings yes <laughs> Me, I'm a one room apartment, minimalist style, baby. Studio, Studio apartment, one lamp, one TV, minimalist couch in the middle of the floor, one pillow on the bed. Like, if I don't rock with you, I have nothing for you. Yeah. I understand that silence and distance can be weaponized. Uh, yep. So I try not to do it to the point when it's, I'm icing you out. But I, I just, felt iced out. I mean, Please. how could you not? Yeah. How could you not? We still operated a house. The kids got the way they needed to get. We we're still a great team even when we're beefing with each other. Yeah, but yeah, I don't I don't feel mm -hmm. close to you when those things happen. Yeah. And I can't fake closeness. Yeah, and yeah. then the inverse, like I feel bad because I don't want to be that way towards yeah. you. I'm not warmed up. I'm still upset. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that we took that time, took them a couple of weeks, because I got to play the scenario in my head a million times. Same. And I got to not be angry because if I would have had that conversation mm -hmm. with you when I was angry, that small part of me that wants to destroy you <laughs> because you pissed me off, oh it would it would have took over. But yeah. you know how that is. Of course, yeah. of course. You can say the thing to solve the problem, or you can say the thing to get your words yeah. off. Yeah, those are two totally different. <laughs> they don't go to the same no. destination of resolution at all. So I know a lot of you guys are thinking like, okay, guys, cool. Uh huh. How did you solve it? I think it was a conversation <laughs> where we tried it a couple times. Like, yeah, hey, you ready to talk? Nah. Yeah. One time we were at a party, he was like, you want to talk about it? I'm like, I'm too good in mood. Like, yeah. I mean, my mood is too good right now. Like, is this going to be solution oriented or are we going to talk about our feelings? You really, you going to talk about your feelings. I'm like, I'm really happy right now. Let's just be happy. You you, you told me, <laughs> you were like, I don't know. Is the conversation going to go well? And I said, oh, I can't promise you that. And you were like, I'd rather just save it for another Yeah, we were on a date and I was like, you know what? Like, uh. That space was <laughs> occupied with this thing that we both know is there and it needs to be resolved through words. Yeah. But the time ain't got to be right. Yeah. And I don't want to wait till the time it is right. I want to wait till I got the first 
green light to go. But that's not the right thing to yeah. do all the time. And it ended up solving itself. We just happened to be, I think the nighttime routine went smoothly. Both kids were asleep. We like were, a three hour conversation. Yeah, and we had the time. Nothing was rushed. We weren't in between things. And I think that's another thing. Like, this is our real life relationship. I'm not trying to rush a conversation where we're trying to like solve a problem. I want to give it the time and space that I would give a work problem or a problem with a friend. Like, you're not something that I do in between spaces on my calendar. <laughs> you know what? I feel like we've been a little vague in terms of what happened. I'm fine specifying a little bit more. So when we were in Hawaii, when Noemi was upset, she actually walked off like she was gone. The number one thing you can do to piss me off is walk away from me. Mm -hmm. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. That made it harder for us to come back together. And when we had the conversation around resolution, it started off with, man, what happened in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I wanted you to understand that I didn't like the way you responded. Mm -hmm. I thought that you could handle it better. But on the same token, what you feeling is valid. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hurt your feelings. Like, yo, let's talk. Let's fix the thing. Mm -hmm. And I think yours was valid. It was like, I've got all of this stuff going yep. on right now. Mm -hmm. I plan this whole vacation. I'm breastfeeding. The yeah. kids are driving me crazy. We got let crazy, me, stupid layover in let Dallas. Me speak on, let me speak on it from my perspective. Go ahead, sis. So, give it to him. Like, let me give you some background. We spent about a week in Hawaii family trip. We were so excited about it for months. It was beautiful. Our friends were going, my family was going. We were gonna take some time with the kids, take some time for us. And we've mentioned when you go on vacation with the kids, it's not a vacation, it's a trip. It's a trip. So like we had that idea, but we got help, so it'll be fine. It was not. Everything leading up to that trip was anxiety inducing. I packed up all of the kids' clothes, all of our clothes. Even had to think about, I'm pumping, I need a lunchbox, I need Ice, ice packs. packs. I need the electric pump, the manual pump. It's like it's logistics. just so many things. Diapers, socks, bathing suits, water toys. Like it was just a lot. At the time I just felt like I was doing it alone. I didn't think that you understood like the mental whatever that it took to get us to that point. So then fast forward to us being in Hawaii, I'm like, okay, well, I have my mom here, I have my friends here, Emery has her friends, but I still feel like I'm doing everything. I'm not resting. It wasn't a peaceful trip. It was just a lot of logistics. And the one thing that I really wanted was to spend time with Kier. Mm -hmm. And I felt like Kier, he had a whole bunch of emotions going on. Like there were things that were so separate from me and our family that he was going through. And I took it as like, man, I, I just did all of this for us and there's no us time. Mm -hmm. And that coupled with, I've just been really overwhelmed with this new role. Like we were talking about roles. My hard boundary was that I was gonna prioritize my family. What I wasn't expecting was how hard putting down boundaries can be especially when it comes to you, especially when it comes to your job, when it comes to tests, like little things like, I'm gonna stop putting acrylics on because I don't have two hours to be at the nail salon. Mm -hmm. So now I'm changing my day to day. I don't have the time to go get my hair done like I did before because I gotta take care of the kids or I gotta pick up the kids or I gotta do my nine to five work. And it was just like, dang, like I feel like I'm losing, not myself, but I don't know. I, even now I can't really explain all of the individual things, but it was just a huge adjustment. I was overwhelmed and I didn't have the words. Mm -hmm. So when we got into the argument and he was just like, I felt like you could have explained this better. And I'm like, I'm trying. <laughs> like, I don't know why I don't have the words, but I don't. I don't know why it's coming across this way, this aggressive or whatever way, but I'm not trying to do that. And I felt like he was so focused on my approach. I was so focused on what I was feeling mm -hmm. that we weren't meeting. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just this. That's a losing strategy right there. It is, there. it is. Can you, not everyone, because the dopey, inconsistent, unhelpful husband trope is so big. Oh, can I we, see. Can we explain like we were doing it all by ourselves? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you were doing it all by yourself. Can you explain? So when I mean I'm doing it by myself, so Kira and I, everything that you see here is our business. We run this business together. Mm -hmm. We both are social media content creators. Kira mostly, I mean, you do it full time. I do it kind of part time, but I handle a lot of like the operations behind the scenes. I handle logistics, just making sure our family still go smoothly. We decided to do in this new season of our business is I want it here to prioritize on the content creation. He even edits my stuff so that I don't have to spend time editing. And then my responsibility is kind of like household logistics. So it's not that he wasn't doing stuff around the house. It's that we were both adjusting to like completely new roles. Yeah. Um, 
business wise. <laughs> don't work man it doesn't because what happens is i end up being like oh all right let me clean the kitchen real quick i know you tired uh -huh. let me clean the kitchen i clean the kitchen and i walk away and i turn around and it looks crazy again yeah. i'm like okay <laughs> let me clean the kitchen again yeah. and i do it more aggressively and then i blink and it look crazy again i'm like hold on man we weren't flexible enough that's the thing about the rose it's yeah. flexible and i think like even in the last video you'll hear little things like i was supposed to do pick up and drop off for the kids when i went back to work right I was supposed to go into the office. Yeah. That was supposed to be the that plan. Was the goal. That didn't work because the one day that I decided to go in the office, I forgot my pump. I forgot something. I forgot a charger. I realized I didn't eat. I didn't have my water bottle. It is a lot easier <laughs> to do work here where I have everything that I need. When I leave the house, it's not just me and my purse. It's me, my purse, All my pump, stuff. my batteries, my laptops, both laptops, the camera. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. And then him, he's doing either pick up or drop off, waking up at 5 30 in the morning but he gotta be up to get the baby, get the big girl, put some clothes on, change the diaper, leave the house, come back after having four hours of sleep, be expected to edit from edit nine, or nine do a to podcast like, interview do a po or then, write a yes. speech. And then this time opened up time for him to take more opportunities. So he was doing TED Talks, speaking engagements, flying to like other states, like to the West Coast to do like a two hour talk. Then to come back home on a like five, six hour flight, he gets in the door and I'm like, here, baby. take the baby, take her, no. I'm done. So I just think that yeah. we were both in our like silos. Like we were in our situations where like you were focused on how overwhelmed you were that you couldn't, I mean, I wouldn't even expect you to look at it from my side. And I definitely wasn't looking at how tired he was. Cause I'm like, you get a break from the kids. Yeah. And he's just like, I was, I was working. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a flight. I was trying to figure, I was still editing content on the plane. And the hotel and room. The hotel. Yeah. So I just think that we were in these places where we couldn't see the other person's stuff, but we knew that our stuff was a lot. It's helpful to me when I talk to other men to be in a relationship with a woman that understands that I can be tired too. I see a lot of wives and moms just talking cash about their male yeah. partners on the internet and i get it like the useless husband trope is funny yeah. it is it's funny but on the same token there has to be some gap in reasoning there because mm -hmm. even with us sometimes i'm like hey babe can i help hey babe can i help hey babe can i help and you be like nah i got it what you really like is like nah i got a system and yeah. the way that you're going to do it is going to deviate from my system and yeah. i may have to do it over or do it again yeah. to my liking yeah. but that sinks a lot of wives and mothers yeah. that inability to let go of that control and in turn it's like my husband's a useless partner it's yeah. like you gotta give him space to do it his way this is one joint i never forget it's this woman in the foreground and her husband in the background he's washing dishes and she's just in the full oh i hope the women don't see you as a as a gender traitor I'll, I'll explain Go ahead. okay mm -hmm. and and she's just in the front and she's like holy spirit activate holy spirit activate because he's doing the dishes wrong, wrong. <laughs> right and i'm looking in the back and i'm like i don't know i mean it look it look decent to me mm -hmm. but that inability to say hey this isn't my way yeah. But this way still gets the job done, sinks a lot of women. I've seen them in therapy and everything. And I don't know if there is an intelligent counter perspective to that. You know how sometimes we talk about drama in the family and it's like, keep it in the family. Mm -hmm. I think this is one of those things where the internet and people who may not have marriages like us look at that for its literal sense. I look at those videos and I think it's funny. Mm. My friends who have supportive husbands look at it and think like it's funny. It's kind of like the same thing with my wife and the Amazon packages. Mm. They shopping too much. Nine times out of 10 is cleaning supplies and diapers and stuff that we decided that we needed to get three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. But it's just like that trope. Unless you're in it, you don't really understand. And if you're outside of that, you're like, damn, like she don't even care about spending all her She's money on, all on worthless money. things. And it's just like, <laughs> open up the box and see what's in there. And talk to any wife and ask them to open up the box and see what's in there. That's a running joke yeah. for men that they always be like, it's something for the house. Like, oh, we need more stuff for the house? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a running joke. Every yeah. man's like, I only yeah. buy nothing for me. I mm -hmm. only buy it for the house. Yeah, like, it's funny to people who actually do have useful husbands. The joke is in the dramatization of what real life actually is. I think my not, funny button is broken. I can't tell sarcasm yeah, for I people. Yeah, I think, well, it's not sarcasm if you feel like you're being attacked. 
but it's sarcasm if you're the one saying it, but saying it's actually not. You, you know, see what I mean? You know where I think my like issue comes from? It's the difference between men being like, ha 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 in public, mm -hmm. and then when we all get in the room like, man, I don't really like the way they talk about me. Exactly like the <laughs> Amazon like, thing. It's like, bro, why it's, don't you say something? It's ha 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 about the Amazon packages, but for us, women like me are like, I actually don't do anything yeah. for myself. Yeah. I'm actually not purchasing things yeah. for myself. And now everybody on the internet or my husband is always commenting about these Amazon packages when none of it really is for me. It's for your ass because you don't have no socks. <laughs> or it's for the kids because the kids be missing their socks. Or it's for the laundry detergent because I'm the one that's doing laundry detergent. We ran out of pods. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of like it's funny if you're in it and you're understanding that it's a joke but it's not funny for people who if aren't outside married. Outside of that experience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's say men who aren't husbands who look at this literally and say I don't want somebody spending all of my money on Amazon packages. Or for the women who's single who does have a system in their house I'm like why would I get married when I'm going to have a husband that doesn't know how to use a hamper. Mm. It's not literal but maybe as husbands and wives we need to do a better job at sharing both sides of that it's kind of like when you talk to your girlfriends and you vent about all the anxious stuff that your Ooh. man does and then they hear about how awesome he is and they're like what mm -mm. and i think that's what we need to practice on you gotta be careful with telling your friends about yeah. the bad parts of your relationship because you forgive your partner but your friends do not yep your partner's forever colored through that lens so, so that's going, a good point going back to us talking about like one person doing everything the other person whatever that's where that was coming from it was coming from us trying to figure out a flow that made sense but it still kind of touched on each other's triggers mm -hmm. so i think for you one of your triggers was helping and being shut down wanting to help me and me being like nah i got it because after a while you stop asking right and mm -hmm. then on my end it's just like well listen to the way that i'm asking you to help me because you're trying to find ways that fit but i'm telling you the ways that you like you can't help me with pumping but you can help me with the kitchen <laughs> but you help me every you ask me every day to help with pumping and I'm like, no, leave me alone. I told you, you can't help me with pumping, but do this. And you're like, I'm asking how to help you. And I'm like, yeah, so do that. That's mm -hmm. the disconnect that happens a lot in relationships. And I think that's where that shutdown happens. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, even connected to the Hawaii trip, that's where we needed to talk more. Instead of focusing on both of our reactions to what each other were saying about us in the relationship, we needed to focus more on the, okay, so what exactly are we talking about here? Yeah. What exactly is the issue? Okay, I understand how you feel. You understand how I feel. What's yeah, the like thing? what's the thing here? And the thing ended up being both of us struggling with the constant adjustment. I think we came into this space, we got into a groove, we're like, okay, we're gonna do that. And then every time we tried to go and do that thing, whether it was on this day, I'm gonna go into the office, I'm gonna pick up and drop off the kids, you're gonna have a free day. Then we wake up in the morning and I'm like, I can't go to the office because I didn't charge my pumps. I can't find this. I need you to pick the kids up today. I need you to today. pick up the kids That's up. Right. And it's a constant adjustment or it's a day where I do pick up the kids and do pick up and drop off. And then I come home and I promise to make dinner. I'm dog. Yeah. I'm not making dinner that day and that throws everything off. So yeah. it's just, we weren't being fluid enough we weren't understanding that like every day is going to look different. Also That's not being realistic legit. about our individual bandwidth not because there'll be times you wake up in the morning you're like, I'm going to cook dinner tonight. And I'll be like, <laughs> you sure? Uh-huh. You're like, yeah, I got it. Yeah, six o'clock. And then she done super warming through the day and it's six o'clock. She's like, man, I ain't Dog. got it. I'm like, damn. <laughs> all right, let me figure something out. Yeah. But now I'm starting to be preemptive and be like, nah, you're taking on more than you can. Yeah. I know it's not going to work that way, mm -hmm. but I'm going to let you cook and I'm going to just make it in my head that by six o'clock, she don't say yep. nothing. I'm just going to go out and get dinner. Yep. Or I'm, I'm going to start cooking uh -huh. myself. And on my end, it's like, hey, you had a really tough week. You should go hang out with the boys. I'm going to call this we're good. Man, let me tell you how <laughs> crucial that is to have somebody who doesn't always need you on the hip. Like, I don't want to go into a tirade, but I just see a lot of people confuse emotional codependency with love. Yeah where you don't let your partner go out and have their own separate lives. I don't mm. think there's anything healthy about that. And not saying that your relationship's doomed if you do that, mm. but that's not healthy to have your partner always like this and the second they try to detach from you, you... <laughs> Stop okay. falling into the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in the second that that person tries to get some distance from you, you yeah. take it personally as if they don't love you or care about you. And then you react that way. I see a lot of that. And to have you, all I got to say is, hey, babe, next Thursday, I'm thinking about going to such and such and such. What do I need to do? You need me to hold the girls down. Sometimes she'll be like, yeah, how about this? You do both the baths. Yeah. You feed Emery. I'll put Sydney to bed. Yeah. After Emery's down, you go do your thing. Yeah. Bet. 
at first I ain't like that because I felt like me being the independent person that I am, yeah, me being with that. full adult since I was 18, I felt like I was asking for permission for my own time. And I don't think I realized that we're mm -hmm. all on a schedule that has to work together. If I throw it off, mm -hmm. everybody is off. Mm -hmm. If you tell me you're going to go get your nails done, it's only going to take two hours. Not your nails. Your hair is what takes the longest. Yes. And then four hours later, you still at home. I'm like, dog. <laughs> to your point, that flexibility yeah. and, and just having it. Don't get me wrong. I do not love it. I don't yeah. love having to be this flexible. Sacrifice don't feel good all the time. I can't think of a time sacrifice really feels amazing in the moment. It's not the sacrifice that feels good. It's the carefree life that comes from making the necessary sacrifices for a certain amount of time. Oh, that's fine. It's the long game. Yeah. Everybody wants immediate gratification. That's not it. It, it rarely works that not, way. Not for us. But I did want to use this time to pose that question about the way that people view their relationships because I do know couples where my husband is my best friend my wife is my best friend and we do everything together I don't think I, there's a problem with that I think that's different than codependency right 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 yeah. I just wanted to know does your relationship fall under that because ours oh, does not yeah what's your style mm -hmm. of relationship are y'all more like playmates where it's like a you know y'all got a playful relationship are you more of companions where it's a mm -hmm. very intimate spiritual vibe that y'all got is mm -hmm. it mostly like a sexual vibe that y'all I got and yeah. everything else is built around that are y'all more friends are you mm -hmm. more lovers like what's your style of relationship comment below and if you're not in a relationship i want you to tell me what your ideal style mm -hmm. of relationship would be mm -hmm. so if you were in one what you would like it to look like on the inside so if you could categorize ours what would you say homie love a friend yes I feel like it's three different relationships. Yeah. I really feel like I'm in a relationship with three I'm in a relationship with three different people, y'all. There's like the lover aspect of it. That's strong. And I feel like that's always strong. Yeah. The friend part gets difficult sometimes because I hate when people are like, oh my my husband is my best friend. Yeah. And it's like it's true, but I, for some reason I don't like the way it sounds. I don't. I don't feel like that's <laughs> true when dudes say it. I think Yeah, I, I feel think like people be, be lying. Like, Bro, you I know feel that like they be lying. You know you can't tell her I everything. Know, like come but on. I I do feel like I can tell, maybe yeah. not in the moment, you know what I mean? There's some things that I got to buffer because it's sensitive to our relationship, but I do feel like I interact with you. Like even when I'm really angry at you, what stops me from feeling so angry is like, but that's my friend though. Yeah. And I talk about seeking positive intent often. Like yeah. when I'm pissed off, I'm like, do you really mean to do that? No. That's yeah, my friend that's, will be saving that's, a lot of that's stuff. That's what saves me from really being angry. I mean, those are like two main ways that I view our relationship. There's the friend, there's a the lover, but then there's also like the partner like how are we gonna make sure we raise these girls Man, the right facts. way how are we gonna make sure we handle our business the right way i wonder which one is the strongest of the three i, I think it changes it depends. i think lover has been strong lately because of some of the conflicts that we've been going mm -hmm. through insert hawaii whatever but i think we really needed to focus on the love part because our business is strong our co-parenting relationship we got it the mm -hmm. fact that we can co-parent as good as we could even beefing i was like it's oh we done leveled up yeah it's pretty good we, and i think we needed to work on the lover part even mm -hmm. though we were going on dates we weren't really connecting to make sure that the other person still felt love i think we spent a lot of time making sure that we felt understood and we felt safe but that's not it i think yeah, for us, I never realized that you needed you needed to feel loved that's, and shame for me and i feel so like tough. that's where we were i yeah. mean that's where we are right now that's my focus do on you, the relationship do right you now. feel like i remember one time after we had conflict argument disagreement or whatever you looked me right in the face you said i'm always going to ask you for more like no matter yeah. how much you give, I'm always gonna ask you for more. I play that back in my head because I understand that, but that never feels good to hear because it feels like no matter what I'll do, it's never gonna be the top of the mountain. It's never gonna be enough permanently, mm -hmm. which I guess is to be expected yeah. with life. But when That's you're right. stretching yourself beyond your limits and you pushing and you stretching and you feel like you ain't got no more material and you stretching and you say, "Hey, look how much I stretch," and the person yeah. says, "That's awesome." more and then you stretch it stretch it stretch it like i can't do no I more i think it's the intention that's the problem because you don't have to stretch so much and i think I that's, see, that's, that's that was the other that. side i disagree I disagree. Mm -hmm. Externally, I see where you can see that, but I do have mm -hmm. to stretch that much. If I don't, some of them arguments we had three years ago, mm -hmm. 
would still be arguments today instead of stuff that's water under the bridge. So let me re-ask. Not the stretching too much. What's the intention? Are you stretching to show me, to prove something to me? Nah. What's the, like, I guess the thing is, okay, fine, we're stretching, but what are you stretching for? I'm are you stretching, not you specifically, but like as somebody, mm -hmm. are you stretching to say, hey, look at what I did for you. You Ooh, should be appreciative. That's, that's are you a stretching, good point of distinction Are you stretching right because you're like, I see where I'm lacking in the relationship and I want to be a better person. What's the intention behind that stretch and i think that matters and it's like a like look at what i did for you did you yeah do it for me? whenever it, it comes it out that way yeah it's like well wait a minute you're not doing me a favor mm -hmm. you're being my partner mm -hmm. one and two if i can just add a little bit of savoriness to your grits some bacon grease and there you go that's <laughs> some that's butter, some salt. there you go in that lane <laughs> i think that's the difference between something that's internally motivated and yeah. something that's externally motivated if i'm changing something to appease and placate you the second that i'm at a moment of weakness or it gets really hard for me or it's something that my brain mm -hmm. just doesn't mm -hmm. really do very well i'm probably not going to be able to show up in that mm -hmm. way but if i do it for me mm -hmm. and i do it under the pretenses of the things that fit within my capacity at the yeah. time that's different yeah that's like when you lose weight because you really want a healthy lifestyle versus losing weight because you just broke up with somebody mm -hmm. and you about to show them that i'm about to show <laughs> the them weight body. yeah the revenge <laughs> body weight almost always comes back because yeah. it's not internally motivated yeah. the same way it would be if you're like i want to get healthy because of me for me instead of i'm gonna get healthy for me i want to show mm -hmm. i want to show you what you miss it's a different level of motivation that sticks mm -hmm. with you different right and i don't think you were motivated by that you personally but i just wanted to make that point because people that's been, with that out there that's been an issue in past relationships yeah. shoot that's been an issue in our past look how much i change that's, that's you still been, don't appreciate me yeah that's been a thing but i just think that like going to your point about the stretching part and i think with you you're just like oh it's hard to stretch and for me, I look at it like that's what I expected I in know, a relationship. I know, and that's where I know. we butt heads. It's uneven. Yeah. It's uneven. Mm -hmm. And we say this here on the sit down talk all the time. The worst thing is when you're putting forth a 10 and on yes. the other person's scale, it registers as a two. It's like you don't mm -hmm. see my 10. Like 10. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, that look like a two, brother. But so the question is when you see it as a two or when you see that task as something that you expected, how do I show you that I appreciate? your 10 because we talk about this all the time and we don't talk about the how it's not going to be easy for me to look at something that appear to be a two and treat it as a 10 just because you told me to right. but what i can do is i can appreciate understand your 10 but how do i show you that i appreciate that even though to me it looks like a two i think for me it's going to be jumping within my frame of reference mm -hmm. so you knowing that it's a two to you but you know me well enough to know that me even doing a little bit is like a seven eight to me mm -hmm. like meet me at eye level it's like like, hey, I peeped that you wiped the kitchen down like three times a day. Like, thank you. There are people saying, that's your job. Yep. You live in the house. You should be doing that. Because men do this to women too we all, all the do time. It. We, do it we to all everybody. do this to each mm -hmm. other. Hey, oh, you, you held the kids down all day? You ain't mama. You supposed to. Oh, you put your clothes in the habit. You cleaned up the room before I got home. This your house you're supposed to. Even when you're doing a good job and it's your job to do a good job, it feels good to hear the person you love tell you that you're doing a good job. Yep. That little acknowledgement goes a long way. And for yep. some reason, we withhold validation yeah. from, we from our that. partners. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to do no, that. I'm supposed to be a good human, but it does feel good when people recognize that. I'm not trying to downplay anything or anybody's like preferences here. What I'm trying to hone in on is that like this is my friend. You feeling more like a friend now, like this part of our relationship. Because we have a common enemy. <laughs> hey, you want to unite two people? Give them a common enemy. <laughs> kids, man. Yeah. These responsibilities. They kicking. They like kicking I feel, door down. I feel like we're on the battlefield together. We're going to be on different sides, but we fight in the same fight. No, I feel we like it's a bar fight. fight. Like we back to back. We yep. got our fist up. Mm. I get hit. We swing around. She kicked the dude. I throw somebody over the table. Yep. I get hit in my back with a yep. chair. She turn around a two piece and bloop, bloop. Yep. Like it feels like we're in a bar fight and it's just like this never ending wave of bearded men with tattoos <laughs> trying to kick our ass. I had to think about where I was going to go with it. Look, we're not going to get into our complaint train yeah. bag with parenting, but y'all know. I think the homie love a friend thing, that's our dynamic. It just yeah. so happens to work for us. But find your dynamic with your partner. That was key for us. And I think Ooh. that our dynamic has changed. Just taking homie love a friend, like different things took priority. I think there's also something to be said for 
understanding that I feel like the older you go in life, I don't like when people tell people like, you need to just settle for whatever's out there. Mm -hmm. That's a shady message to send to people who are looking for long-term companions. Yeah. But you also got to realize that your person is not going to have the entire package. Oh, no. Like your relationship is going to have to mature in some places. Think of your relationship as a person and this person is new on the job. They have to mm -hmm. figure out their way around a the workplace. They got to figure out where the photocopier at, what part of the photocopier you need to kick the up yeah. and make sure that your copies come out mm -hmm. of. Like those little quirks that you only know yeah. once you've been on a job for some time. Yeah. Your relationship needs to grow and mature. But the hard part is some relationships are never going to blossom fully. Mm -hmm. They're going to hit a limiter and that's going to be it. Unless both people have the capacity yeah. to move through and resolve that issue. And so, there's no cheat code to figure out how that works oh, in the God, beginning. Oh, God, no. No matter what the <laughs> male relationship guru who's selling you a book on social media has to say there is no quick fix it doesn't work that way if it did all of our mommies and daddies would be each other's high school sweethearts mm. it don't work like just that just imagine if you married your high school sweetheart where would you be right now Jesus. no shade but Jesus. i wouldn't be here i wouldn't i wouldn't be here i had hella kids <laughs> oh god hella kids hella food stamps oh man <laughs> shout out to food stamps man it kept me alive for a long hey, time that's real. yeah i'm really glad we resolved that because i don't like being upset with you you and I think it blows me more because when there's an issue I feel like we can resolve with talking but it goes big beyond that for yeah. whatever reason it always hurts my feels because I'd be like damn I thought we were beyond that and it's so deflating to be reminded that your relationship isn't where you either ideally would like yeah. it to be or where you thought it was Same. like damn we got more work to do it's like having a pee real bad and you think that your apartment is a block away you get to the next block you're like oh damn it's another five blocks oh man <laughs> that five gonna feel like 30 when you got a pee pee that's like if you're feeling in a relationship yeah baby, man I be feeling, it, feel, it feels hopeless because we've gone through this so many times and then we had that breakthrough and we talk and we leave with more than just hurt feelings yeah. You know, we leave with actionable items. I understand the way that you feel me. We won't say it verbatim like this. No. It's kind of a lot. But... This is after we've had time to think about what we could have said. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. like this in real time at all. Yeah, we don't do this off, off the top. <laughs> but it's like, I understand where you are. I don't need to agree to empathize. Yeah. I don't need to agree with you. Yeah. I understand where you are. I respect what you said. I want to honor that. This is what you need me to do. But this is my capacity in the moment. This is the closest I can get to that. Can you accept that? Cool. All right. And then when the time comes up for me to get that close, but do a little bit more, I will. But it's also incumbent on her to understand that I'm not going to fix the problem the way that she wants me to ideally. Or immediately. Or immediately. Mm -hmm. You can't ask me to cook your meal and then say, well, do it your way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They get mad when the eggs are saltier yes. than you want. Like, I can't make your breakfast the same way that you would. That's a crazy analogy, but no, it makes I just, sense. yeah, I say all that to say the expectations that you have of your partner go a long way toward how you all resolve conflict. Mm -hmm. I made a video about treating my daughter like a princess and very few people were a little bit upset, but I think we can all agree that we've been in relationships with people who had a hard time taking their irrational behavior and and saying, you know what, this is a me thing. This is my stuff. Mm -hmm. I think we all also get upset with ourselves when we're that person in a relationship who may not be taking full mm -hmm. responsibility. I feel that sometimes in a relationship. Like, am I tripping? Am I not taking full responsibility? Am I overlooking something? Mm -hmm. You know, I ask myself the question. And if the answer is no, I'm like, all right, bet. Yep. Well, I'm mad now. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not like that, but yeah, you know, kind of like that. I really want this to be like, especially the sit down talks moving forward, for it to be something that not only couples kind of look to, but also singles or people who are just looking for personal development tips. Facts. Like with what Kier just said, I think a lot of times people come into relationships, whether they're like romantic relationships or friendships, like I recognize my faults. I know where I'm at. <laughs> I know that this is my <sighs> stuff. Hyper self-awareness. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with being hyper aware, but that's half of the battle. Absolutely. Half of the battle is identifying your stuff. The second half of the battle is being able to give grace to the people in your life who are now dealing with your new self-aware self, -aware self and giving them grace to transition. Like, for example, a lot of people might say that I was like aggressive, bossy, overstep, and all of those things. You mean growing up? Yeah, growing mm -hmm. up as a kid. And which I know I was. I don't remember my entire childhood, but it doesn't seem far off enough to where those people are not telling the truth. Come on, self-actualization. I believe that. And for me, it was like, I overstep because I know better. 
or like the last talk we were saying i overstepped telling you to go hang out with your friends and overstepped telling you like hey i don't i got this you go i struggled with that because i didn't want you to think that you couldn't handle your own life mm -hmm. but also as your friend as the person seeing you i recognize that you needed that space mm -hmm. and for me what i have to understand is like yes what i'm doing is for the greater good yeah i'm telling you to go and to hang out with your friends and i'm overstepping in that way but i also have to recognize that that can also come across as you're not doing enough in the house so just go because i'd rather do it by myself oh. and i have to be mindful of the way that i come across and fix those things i've I never thought you meant that one time it never comes across that really? way no oh well maybe i'm just making up a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> but <laughs> but having these conversations I, how would you helps. know unless yeah, yeah i've never felt that way one time you know what it probably is then people have said that to me in past relationships oh, yeah. so i'm hyper aware of that but how would you know we, if need we don't to have those conversations remind us to make a video on the ghost of past relationships and allow us to make a video on the ghost of the past in your own relationship because we do this all the time where we treat each other like the former versions of ourselves mm -hmm. and not the people that or we are to each other today. Past trauma from oh, past man. former trauma from past relationships. I still got we trauma. We talked here. about it the other day. I still got trauma from my relationship way yeah. back when. And I think a lot of us do. Yeah. I think a lot of us do. And just to piggyback off of that, remind me of this too. It is totally okay to refer to your past in your current relationship. Oh, absolutely. People are so afraid to talk about exes or things that they did in the past or how they show up. It's not always just trauma. It could be the way that you seek love. Like, come on, y'all. Like that. Somebody give me a bullet point <laughs> list. I don't understand how someone could be in a relationship with another person and never talk about their past relationships openly or never have the space to do so. That's like buying a car and you ain't get the car facts at all. You don't know how many accidents has been in. You just know the version that's right in front of you and the story that they tell you. But if people tell you about the previous relationships, you can step back and be like, wait a minute. And that's why it's so hard. Yeah. I feel like for me, right before we got married, I spent a lot of time sitting and thinking about my last serious relationship and what that person would say were my flaws about mm. what that person will say were issues that I caused in the relationship because I think a lot of times when we're hurt or when relationships kind of go sour we're fixated on what that person did to us and we don't really think about what we could have contributed to the demise of that relationship absolutely and I feel like for us I really wanted it to work. And both of us were coming from, well, not you, you hadn't been in a relationship in a long time, but I was like a couple of years off of like an eight year long relationship. Yeah, you a big this one. wasn't a fling. At that time, I thought I was gonna live a totally different life than the one that I'm living now. And I didn't want a repeat of those mistakes. I didn't want a repeat of the hurt that I felt, but also the hurt that I caused. Like I'd be an idiot to say that I was innocent. You know what I mean? But I don't see how you could enter a relationship that you really want to work for the long haul without reflecting on ways that you could have been better, but having an action plan on how to actually be better. Everybody would be like, I know, I know I'm like this, I know I'm like that, but do you know how that presents in your relationship? Do you know how that makes your partner feel? Do you know how to make your partner feel better when you do those things? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let's save that for another sit down talk. I think, like that's I a, said, put the bullet points on Yeah, remind us down in the comments, <laughs> like, hey, y'all said y'all were gonna talk yeah. about this. It feels good to talk about it out loud because relationships are something that we kind of we hoard oh, all the little secrets, and it is sacred, of course. Of relationships course, are sacred of course of course and, and you should treat them that way but it feels good to get that out into the open because we're not the only people struggling with this and That's when we this see people out them in public they're like yo we stopped to sit down and talk and me and my husband had a two-hour conversation yeah. it's not about to expose what it is that people aren't doing or could be doing better it's to get the conversation started yeah. so that people can live very wholesome full love lives you you're know? not on an island every time we talk to another couple even things that we think it was just us dealing with and then we'll talk to other couples they're like yo y'all dealing with the same be everybody. how'd y'all get to the other side and that's what we want to do we don't have all of the answers but we can at least share with you like the way that we are overcoming things because maybe it'll help you recognize things within yourself maybe it'll give you some strategies or maybe you'll look at us and be like you know what that's not gonna work yeah that ain't for me but it made me think about what will work yeah and if we're doing any of those things then job well done i'm glad that we got that resolution off and that's yeah. not the last time we're gonna beef or have static it's not. every time it gets bigger it just gets bigger and bigger and what we find a way to miss pac-man that joint you yeah. know and that gives me hope that we can continue to do that forever i was really worried about this time and i i'm so glad that 
we you gone all, through it. I feel like you're always waiting for the big one. Like, oh, this is it. Like, there's no big one. Because you've never had your heart broken before. Like, you've never been in a situation. Like, people think that breakups. I've had my heart broke -ish. Uh, ish You hear that? Man, that Don't nice. downplay. Don't it's downplay stained, heartbreak. Man. By who? He's never had that conversation You know with about me. the one with the thing with the chain. <laughs> oh, yeah. How old were you, though? I was young. That don't count. <sighs> Don't yeah, tell these 20 year olds they heartbreak don't count. It counts. It counts. But like, nah, it didn't you like just meet her though? How long what was we that? We're not going to do is make me like a sip on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it was it was like a summer flame. But you know what? Maybe we don't always have to relate completely. Nah, yeah. You know I, I, mean? I think this is just a piece that I'm not going to understand. And that's where my fear comes from. Like, I did not think that relationship would not work. Like, I remember I was talking to one of my friends from college, and she was like, wow, I didn't see it happening that way. Like, with my life being married to you with these kids, she, she did not see it that way. That was not my reality. That wasn't the reality of the people around us. But in hindsight, it couldn't have gone any other way. Like Man. this. It had to end. <laughs> if growth from that point to here looks like that, what does from here to 15 years from now look like? But that's why it's so scary because I'm like, this is so sacred that's to me. That's terrifying. It is terrible. Growth is scary as hell. People that's going to oh, be another video. Somebody put that in a, in a bullet good. point. That ain't how growth, growth feel to me. Growth don't feel that I feel great. like somebody hooked my legs up to a car on this side it don't feel and my that arms bad. to a car on this side and <laughs> The See, opposite direction. That's why people be talking about how married couples are really miserable in real life <laughs> because you explain <laughs> like that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. If there's anything that we said today that resonates with you in some way that you can relate to, See, this is what I wanted you that to you say. vibe with, or that you feel like you learn from, put it down below. Let's start a conversation. And with that being said, we thank you so much for joining us on this video today. I feel like that's a formal way. That felt a little too formal. Let's try that again. But we thank you so much for stopping by. Mm. We thank you for stopping by. Make sure that you hit the notification button so that you can know of all of our videos as soon as they post. Also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that we can make you a repeat offender. Not in a way that denies you your freedom or a job, oh but in a way where you come back and watch our videos. All right, we catch you here next time. Bye. Are we going? To... You do it. Ready? You, you probably look real dumb right now. <laughs>